Ah, uh, Dan Delisio. He was the coolest kid in school, despite having the worst name ever imagined. He's heading off to college, leaving behind his one prized possession, a Quantum Leap poster autographed by Scott Bakula himself. If you want that poster, and oh yes you do, you'll have to make him the greatest mixtape ever conceived. One with perfect balance, optimal flow from hit single to hit single, and a perfect collection of the greatest genres of music. It'll take a quick hand and a keen ear for the edge you need to say, hey, I made you a mixtape. Hey there folks, I'm Jeff, and this is Tabletop Toolbox. Today I'm back with another Kickstarter preview video to tell you all about I Made You a Mixtape by Mike Delisio and Dan Hughes. Now before I get too far into this, I'll start with the obligatory hey, I'm showing you a prototype, so some art and rules may change before the final printing, but there is something else I need to share. I've known both Mike and Dan for a number of years. Mike Delisio is an on-air personality for the Dice Tower channel, for which I've also been a contributor now for four years. Dan Hughes comes from such podcast fame as This Game is Broken and Sporadically Bored, which he co-hosts with Mike. Now, I'm not best friends with these guys, but I know them well enough to cast enough doubt as to whether or not you could consider this to be an unbiased look at their new game. That's totally fair, and I'm not going to try to dispute it. What I will say, though, is that this is a very simple, straightforward game. And my main goal for today is to simply tell you how it works, that so you can decide for yourself if it's something that you're interested in. I think that's a fair approach for everyone involved. Sound good? Okay, so as I said at the start of this video, Dan Delisio, guy with the worst name, don't forget, wants a top-notch mixtape. And a good mixtape consists of three things. Balance is the length of the tracks on each side of the tape. A perfectly balanced tape can be flipped without rewinding to the start of the first song. As you place these cassette cards under your console deck, you'll keep track of the difference of the sums in the corner of each card. And you'll move the cube in the direction of the longer side, the number of spaces equal to the difference between the two sides. At the end of the game, the number on the space beneath your marker is your balance score. A good mixtape also has to have flow. I mean, you wouldn't follow Uptown Girl with Public Enemy Number 1, now would you? To track the flow of your mixtape, you'll try to line this cassette ribbon from tape to tape on each side of your console. Each card that lines up with one card above or below it scores one point, but matching both ends of the ribbon will net you three points per card. And lastly, when you think about it, you want a good mix of musical styles on a mixtape, but you don't want it to be too crazy. So the last thing you'll do is score points for each genre of music in your mixtape, scoring more points the more cards of each genre you have. So for example, having six songs from the same genre is worth 21 points, while having just one is worth zero points. Now I've explained how you score your mixtape, but what I haven't covered is how you'll collect and add these songs to your console. Luckily, it's really very simple. In each round, each player will get exactly three cards. You'll look at your three cards and arrange them into two stacks, two cards in one and one card in the other. You'll then pass your two stacks to the player on your left, while receiving two stacks from the player on your right. You will review the two stacks of cards passed to you without rearranging them and choose one to keep and one to return. When the player on your left returns the stack they didn't want, you will then add your cards anywhere from two to four into your console. The cassette cards are marked A side or B side and the length, affecting the balance, will be on the left for A cards or on the right for B cards. You can freely arrange the cards you're placing during the round, but not any cards placed in previous rounds. You'll start the game with one song placed randomly into your mixtape, and everyone will get the same number of rounds, but not necessarily the same number of cards. You'll score your balance, your flow for each side, and your total set collection points for each genre, and the winner gets a sweet Quantum Leap poster, possibly sold separately. I don't usually teach the rules to crowdfunding games in these videos, but this one really is that simple. And as I've been informed that except for some minor tweaks to graphic design and of course official packaging, this game is pretty much ready to go. Now I'll be the first to admit that the I split, you choose mechanism used in this game isn't really my favorite thing to do in a board game, but it is used here in its simplest, purest form. That decision of how to split just three cards can be quite a challenge from time to time, especially with 
so many factors to consider with each card. On top of that, this game avoids any excess rules overhead. You never deal additional cards, you never pass a different direction, you never hold on to cards, and that keeps this game super snappy and quick. It also has a fairly small footprint, though you can see that your play area will get a little deep as you play. You just have to make sure that each player starts off with plenty of room in front of them so they're not trying to slide all these cards midway through the game. Other than that, it teaches quick, plays quick, and on top of it all, it has a very unique and delightful theme. The art from Gary King is very simplistic, but absolutely drives home the idea of making a mixtape out of singles from other albums. And my absolute favorite aspect of this game is picking up your hand of cards, instantly recognizing a song title, and just busting out into the chorus of Uptown Girl, she's been living in her uptown world. I Made You a Mixtape is pure theme and simple mechanics meshed together in perfect harmony. It's living proof that nothing is wrong with all the small things, that there are plenty of games still out there for the common people. It doesn't try to pump it up with complex rules or mm, bop you over the head with unnecessary components. And even if it was designed by some friends in low places, well, I still think you should check out the Kickstarter page, to which I'll post a link in the description of this video. You should feel right at home, of course, since you know the rules, and so do I. <laughs> Cheers.